Hello everyone. We are back again in what the lit. Now, as we have set the ball rolling, let us directly get into business without much ado about nothing. Hi guys. Wait. Are we presenting this together? Well, yes, why should we not? Definitely we should do it together. Of course, that's what we've been doing all the days before the exam. Okay, at least on the day before the exam. Okay, really honest. Few hours before the exam. Exactly. Those were times when we learned the most essential concepts for exams. Dear viewers, if you to prepare for the test hastily at the 11th hour, click the like button to show that we are not alone. Let's start. Most deaf. Firstly, let me introduce the four manuscripts where the old English poetry have been preserved or found extant. They are Exeter Book, Junius Manuscript, Vershelley Book, and Beowulf Manuscript. Exeter Book is the largest collection of old English poetry copied down in around 970 AD. This document was given to Exeter Cathedral by Bishop Leofric. The Exeter books consist of riddles and rhyming poems. It contains secular poems eliciting a poignant sense of bleakness and loneliness in their illustrations like separation of lovers, despondency of exile, terrors of sea, etc. These poems were given written form by some of the Christian monks and so some poems also contain religious values in it. They seem interesting. So, let's discuss about a three old English Anglo-Saxon poems titled With Sith, Dior Slamant and the Seafarer from the Exeter book. I'll start with a one-liner of With Sith. With Sith, a wide goer, a wanderer is also known as the traveler song. The author and date of composition remains unidentified. It manifests the wayfaring life of the glee man who goes ahead into the world to wander here or there and is consistently rewarded for his singing. This suggests that literature as a paying profession began early in English history. Dior's Lament is a poem aligned in strophes, each one conveying some depressed or grieved hero and ends with a hopeful sentence. His sorrow passed away, so will mine. In this poem, we have a picture of a Saxon scop or minstrel who wanders sorrowfully contemplating upon how he has to confide entirely upon his power to amuse his chief because at any time he might be superseded by a better minstrel. Why not? Because even the mighty Mufasa was superseded by psychic scar. If that be the case for a king, lion king, Imagine the poor plight of a minstrel. This poem is much more poetic when compared to Witsit. Dior's lament is not just personal but universal. It stresses on loss, exile and lamentation along with the credence in delicacy of worldly pleasure. The seafarer is all about a lone seafarer on the sea who is reminiscing and estimating his life. This poem can be split into two parts wherein the first part expresses the adversity of ocean or sea life and about the hardship of the subtle call of the sea. The second part deals with the allegory in which the adversity of the seaman symbolizes the troubles of life and the call of the sea symbolizes the eternal call of the soul to God's home. This poem deals with eternity, self-control and other themes. Sea was an integral part of Anglo-Saxon life because she sold seashells on the seashore. Well, not only that, it was most of their livelihood and source for life. Comment if you are able to get this tongue twister right. Share this with your friends and challenge them with this tongue twister and subscribe our channel for more lit content. Hey wait, are we forgetting something? What about the shout out? 
We had posted a game in the comment section of our previous video and Philomen White Sheila What's my name? What's my name? What's my name? My name is Sheila Found those errors. Kudos to Philomen White Sheila. Here is our shout out to you. Hmm, then it's a wrap. Stay healthy, physically and intellectually. Slay ignorance. And keep wondering, what the lit?